All right, here they are. Hello, boys. like 20 minutes of trying to unlock a door. This is gonna be a fun day. Overtired and underpaid. Morning guys, it's Thursday morning. The good news is the weather's much better this morning. It's cold though and everything's froze up and I really despise winter more and more every year as I get older and less uh, patient. I'm just gonna move my telehandler out of the way, back up the trailer, get these used loaded and get on the way. I am um, later than I wanted to be. I wanted to start at 5.30 um, and it's well after six, so winter. Frozen. A sec, a sec. Okay, try that. Oh, it's still catching something. Is it down I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, load two. First load's fine, but everything's frozen. Husband and wife are, well, wife is grumpy because nothing's working. Husband's trying to help. Well, it took over an hour to load those two. The problem with working with your spouse is when you're exhausted and really irritable because of stuff not going right, you take it out on your partner. <laughs> So I have a lot of apologizing to uh, do when I get back. Sometimes as a, as a wife or partner, um, when they're just trying to help you feel like it's a criticism and it's not, but that's how I took it. So now I got some apologizing to do, but I'll get these, I gotta get these to the market. Okay, we got them loaded, unloaded, and uh, they went off really good actually, which is maybe the turn of the day. And I did call Mark because I said, I can't go another mile thinking that you're mad at me. He's like, I'm not mad at you, it's fine. And I'm like, oh, I hate that I cannot handle it when I think someone's mad at me. It just like gnaws at me like an ulcer. All right, I'm on my way home and then chores. And I've got like a special delivery today that I wanna show you guys. Talk to you soon. I thought I'd recap my morning just so you know where my emotional baggage is coming from today. I woke up really early because my internal biorhythm is completely off. I went to let out the dogs and apparently I was a little bit late letting, letting the old boy out because he had done his business right in front of the door so I had to get rid of it. Got out to the office, uh, I had put the receiver hitch for my trailer in the office last night so it would thaw. So I had locked it in the office, we locked the office up. The lock had froze, so I couldn't get into the office to get the receiver to put on the trailer. So I was in and out of the house trying to talk to Mark to figure out like, how am I gonna get this door open? I have no idea how it opened, but it did open. I got the trailer hooked up, got it up to the barn, lights weren't working. Uh, Mark came out finally and wiggled the wire and it worked because that's all he has to do, especially when I'm really frustrated and irritated. All he has to do is like look at something and it works. I don't know if anyone can relate if you're married. <laughs> and then we tried to shut the door on the trailer. It was fro- the manure was frozen so we couldn't get the door shut. We got that shut, went across the road. I was backing up my trailer and I'm so used to doing everything by myself that when someone starts directing me how to do it, I totally mess up all the time. I don't know if I get nervous. So then that ensued another fight. Not a fight, just... No. It, like, for me and Mark, just raised voices is kind of a fight. Got the lambs loaded. I started to cry because I was like so frustrated and then I was sad that he was mad and then I got like just to the other side of Seaforth and I called him like I'm so sorry please don't hate me I'm a horrible person and he's just like he's like I know you're tired and I'm like oh so the problem with working with your spouse is that there's no one to diffuse a situation so if you are just 
exhausted and at your at, at the end of your rope, you've got no one to just buffer that whole engagement, right? It's just something that we have to work through sometimes and it just apologizing is the first step. We are good, we are fine. I got back here, Moni had coffee waiting for me from McDonald's, so the day has turned around, but I am super late now. I have to get chores done. I wanna get the barn cleaned up because as I said, I have a special delivery coming today and a special person delivering it. And I wanna record those that last lamb that was born yesterday and then hopefully get to the office so I can figure out my numbers and let you guys know how the block did or how this lambing group did because I'm actually excited to figure that out too. Okay, so today's been basically making more room for everybody because everybody's growing exponentially every week. So I expanded the bottle baby pen. These are kind of the medium bottle babies. Uh, the little ones still have their little pen but I introduced some creep and tomorrow I will give them their clostridial vaccine because they're all kind of starting to nibble on that now. I extended this creep area. I made this a little bit bigger because these lambs are getting a lot bigger. And I also, I extended this pen. These ewes and these babies that were born, kind of that second group that was born, now, now they've got a lot more room to, to eat, number one. Um, they've always had enough feet feeder space but as these babies are growing they also want to get in here on the action so I just want to make it so everybody can eat and make this lamb creep area a little bit bigger too they are so happy Down at this end, I made this pen actually a little bit smaller because I have less ewes down here. I think about 62 or so in there, and this group only has about 37, I think, in this group, so it's a lot smaller. So they've got lots of room, still lots of feed left, and it's about 6 o'clock at night, and I just set up their little creep area. So again, feeder, 18% uh, fully prepared pellet, and I usually have a pail of water and I uh, apparently forgot to do that. But they're already in here, just chilling. You guys like the lamb lounge. That's popcorns. So very happy, doing very well. You know, part of the reason I want lambing tighter is I don't have all this waiting to get all my pens rearranged. Uh, I waited way too long to get these lambs onto creep. I like to have lambs on creep at least by day 14, even day 10, I'd like them to get a nibble. Um, but when you're waiting and waiting and waiting to make a pen big enough, because I couldn't sacrifice bunk space for these ewes. Um, some of you have been awesome. You've, you've like drawn me diagrams and things that I could have done, and I totally could have done it. Uh, but it's all just timing, and uh, my feed cart can only get around so much. There's only so much room, so it's just logistics. And part of that is the reason why a lot of the times I use cedars and I synchronize my breeding uh, just so they lamb in a shorter period of time. However, I'm glad we lambed as spread out as we did because I could keep up on my record keeping because that stuff kills me because it's, it's just so time consuming and also gives me time to train any bottle babies uh, in between even though I don't do that much. I've Carissa did most of that but it does free up time whereas when they're all lambing at the same time you have no time to do anything you're just like it's just triage you're just you like you after you after you and lamb after lamb after lamb so spreading it out has definitely got its advantages the disadvantages is logistics and it spreads it out for me coming out here like long hours for more days kind of thing oh i see melissa brought me my milk replacer so I do have to put that in my machine because we are out. So I'm kind of thankful um, today's getting a little bit warmer because the barn froze last night and it was the first time my lines actually froze on this thing. Uh, these ones all stayed good because I think I have enough lambs keeping it keeping it thawed. But the, the older lambs, they're not drinking that much now because they've got water and creep. 
and so the long the long line froze even with that insulated um, that pipe insulation which is garbage uh, I probably need to get like heat tape on it but I'm gonna be weaning them shortly and it's supposed to get warm over the weekend so I think I'm okay for a little bit and the other thing that happened is my light burnout because I had too hot of a light fixture for that, or sorry, a too light, hot of a bulb for that light fixture. So as you can see, it's like not good. So I gotta get this replaced before next week because we're supposed to get cold weather again. So I gotta do that. And um, yeah, so we're down to the last little bit of milk in this sucker. So I'm glad she delivered that. That's perfect timing. wonder if I should have ordered some more milk replacer because we're going through I think I just filled that two days ago so I'm going through a bag every couple days they're happy for now okay I'm gonna show you what uh, what came today all right here they are hello boys so I got new boys today these are the steel composite breed that I bought a few years ago from John and Edie Steele. Hi, you guys are so nice. So that is the yearling, that is a yearling, and the other ones were born this spring. So they're just ram lambs. So John delivered these today. John and Edie are mentors of mine. They're the ones that really helped me figure out my life here in the sheep world. And uh, so he contacted me earlier this year, or maybe last, I think he contacted me last year, he said, listen, if you want some rams, put your name down, uh, because they have such a long waiting list because they have good genetics. And I said, you know what, yep, just reserve me two and I'll make them work. And then earlier this week, Mark was like, do you have enough rams for this next breeding group? And I was so tired, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, ooh, I don't think I do. So I texted Edie and I said, would you happen to have a few more extras you could throw on the load? And they gave me three more. So I have five new rams. And they are that steel composite that I have based all my genetics off of on this flock for the most part. I've brought in some Suffolk and, and some Ile de France and some Rido. Uh, Rido more for the F1 for the for the cross for my to keep back as maternal. And the Suffolk and Ile de France were intentionally brought in for only for the market lambs, but as you can see, these are my ewe lambs. Uh, that are gonna get bred next and a lot of them I had to pull out of that Suffolk Suffolk sired group uh, Because I just didn't have enough that were Rito most of my Ritos were either ram lambs or I just didn't have enough of Them that I could pull from that group. So I'm really happy. I got these whether I put them on the ewe lambs I'm a little bit leery on putting ram ewe, ram lambs with ewe lambs because I want them to kind of know, at least one of them to know what's going on. My plan going forward is to use these guys on those original steel ewes that I got and make a new F1 purebred. They're not purebred because it's not purebred, but anyway, a steel composite on a steel composite. Keep those back as my new F1s. So I'm very excited going forward. This is kind of my 2020 goal is to really start honing in on some genetics and uh, getting getting some new better replacements in here. So I'm very happy. Seem to like the feed in the water. So I did have to use pails in this pen because I want to keep them isolated from my males because I don't want there to be fighting. Um, I'll, likely after the breeding group is done here, I'll put them together then just depending on how they're getting along. But they're pretty good size. Guys, there's another one here, eh? Hello, right here. No, okay. I 
finally got my numbers figured out from this lambing group. Just some rough numbers. 289 lambs out of 133 ewes. We had one set of quints, seven sets of quads, 27 singles, 33 had triplets, and 65 had twins. So a fairly prolific group considering they were bred out of season. These were bred in July. Now they did get bred using my cedar program. Uh, so they are, they are injected with um, PMSG, which helps them ovulate. So whether that stimulated a, a, a few more eggs to, to drop at that point, I'm not really, I'm not really sure on that whole science. Um, but the breed is known to be prolific if they're fed well. And I still think that's kind of where I win in this, in this barn, just because I've got a pretty tight feeding regime. So anyway, that, those are good numbers. And I think what I really wanted to share with you guys, okay, it's, it sounds bad, but overall, um, so there's, there were 26 stillborns, which sounds horrible. Um, but out of the whole total, it's only 9%. And I've had stillborns, like when there's a real issue that runs through this flock, you're easily looking at like 15 to 20%. So I'm at nine. That's a huge improvement, even from this group that lamb last March, that's an improvement. Um, and only eight have died, uh, whether like just from fluke things or something I didn't see when it was born or health, the things that you don't know why they died within like the first 24 hours, 48 hours, um, I've lost eight. So eight out of 289, that's, I'd say that's pretty good. So that's about 2.83% in there. So 88% are still with me out of that whole group. So 255 lambs are bouncing around in here.